Kiev, Ukraine's capital, the target of missiles that set off large explosions tonight. And now experts say it is just a matter of time before Russian forces completely surround the city with tanks and troops. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says enemy sabotage groups have entered Kiev and that he is target number one. Russian strikes have been widespread, hitting every region of Ukraine from the east in Kharkiv to the west in Lviv. It is an extensive and deadly assault. With reports of casualties mounting. A live picture now at Ukraine's capital, where an eerie quiet has fallen on the city. The streets empty after thousands of residents try to flee the conflict. The U.S. believes Russia's ultimate goal is to overthrow the Ukrainian government and establish its own puppet government. Tens of thousands of people have tried to escape to safety, and that caused traffic jams that snaked for miles. People have also been desperate to get money from ATM. And gas for their cars before getting out of the war torn areas. Airlines scrambled after Ukraine closed its airspace. All civilian flights into and out of Ukraine have been halted during the full scale military invasion by Russia. We have all bases covered of the devastation unfolding in Ukraine. First to KTLA's Pedro Rivera with more on tonight's fast moving developments. Pedro. At this hour, it appears the largest city in Ukraine, Kyiv, with a population of almost 3 million. Is under attack. Reports from the ground say explosions have been heard nearby. The Ukrainian government is reporting 137 Ukrainian soldiers were killed within the first few hours of Russia's invasion. The country is barring any men between the ages of 18 and 60 from leaving Ukraine and urging residents to take arms. Take a look here at this tweet from Ukraine's Minister of Foreign Affairs saying tonight horrific Russian rocket strikes on Kyiv. The last time our capital experienced anything like like this was in 1941 when it was attacked by Nazi Germany. Ukraine defeated that evil and will defeat this one. The invasion is underway as Russian forces enter Ukraine from the sky, ground, and sea with tanks and helicopters as Ukrainians take cover in subway stations seeking refuge. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky gave a grim update on the war underway. 137 soldiers dead and more than 300 wounded. In his address from Kyiv, Zelensky saying he believes he is a top target of Putin who looks to terminate the head of state and topple the government. According to our information, the enemy has listed me as target number one and my family as target number two. This map giving a clear indication of the Russian invasion. Russian forces attacking from the north, east, and south. The Chernobyl power plant, the site of the worst nuclear disaster in history, has been taken over by Russian military forces and holding civilian workers hostage. Ukraine is fighting back. This video from Eastern European media company Nexta shows one of six Russian helicopters being shot from the sky by Ukrainian air defense. Today, I'm authorizing additional strong sanctions and new limitations on what can be exported to Russia. From the White House Thursday, President Biden issuing what he calls strict economic sanctions targeting Russia. Every asset they have in America will be frozen. The sanctions include cutting Russia from the financial systems which move money from bank to bank around the world, limiting their government from taking part in the global economy, sanctions against powerful Russian oligarchs and wealthy families, freezing assets from four major banks, including VTB, the second largest bank in the country. The sanctions now target 80 percent of all banking assets in Russia. In light of the sanctions, Russian stock markets plunge. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken tells NBC News the sanctions are a steep consequence for Russia and more could follow if Putin continues the aggression. At the end of the day, if that doesn't stop President Putin, we've made very clear, along with all of our allies and partners, that there will be massive consequences going forward, a price that Russia will have to pay for a long, long time. President Biden has vowed U.S. forces will not engage in the fight in Ukraine. However, the president has ordered additional troops to Germany and Poland to defend NATO territory should Russia continue moving east. World leaders are calling on Putin to retreat, including French President Emmanuel Macron, who says that he would like to mediate a ceasefire between Ukraine and Russia. We will continue to bring you the latest updates from the newsroom at 11. Live in the newsroom, Pedro Vera, KTLA 5 News.
Pedro, thank you. Thousands of Ukrainians are fleeing the country following the Russian invasion, while others have packed subway stations now transformed into makeshift bomb shelters. Many have nowhere to go and no idea what the future will bring. Loved ones here at home are afraid for their friends and relatives half a world away. Mary Beth McDade joins us live from East Hollywood, where she spoke to worried family members about the escalating crisis. MB. Yeah, and Mike and Cher, we spoke to one woman who says that her family lives in Kiev and that the Russians are there. She says that some of her family members are the ones that you see down in those subways hiding out for protection. She says at this point, there is just no way that her family and friends could make it all the way west and cross into Poland. Needless to say, she was one of many who came here tonight to pray. Prayers for peace. And that the lives of their families and friends will be spared as Russia invades Ukraine, launching a wide ranging attack, hitting cities and bases. Many Ukrainians gathered at this East Hollywood Ukrainian Catholic Church Thursday night to pray for their loved ones back home. My whole family is in Ukraine my dad, my siblings, my grandparents. All my friends. It's just heartbreaking. Hannah tells us her family lives in Kiev. She says they, like so many others, are taking shelter inside subways from the Russian attacks. They can't live right now, so there is no, um, uh, there is no connection. You know, there's all the airports are blocked, so you cannot leave the country. She says trying to drive west and cross into Poland is basically impossible with the traffic jams at the border. All they can do right now is to go a little bit further from the city and, you know, find like a country house and hopefully just stay there and be with their families. Hannah's best friend is hiding out with her co workers in an office building in Kyiv. They are just in the room, sleeping there, and they have one TV to. Just watch what's going on in the news. And with so many Ukrainians trying to flee to Poland, there's now a refugee crisis building at the border as we speak. This, according to officials with the Ukrainian Culture Center in East Hollywood. The expectation or the current estimate is that there could be as many as 5 million refugees. Piling up on the Polish border. The pastor leading Thursday's Ukrainian prayer vigil says he too is scared for his family and friends' safety over in Ukraine. I know from the, our history with Russia, you know, when the Russian army come, comes, you know, they have no mercy to anyone. And he fears what Vladimir Putin's true goal is. There's a war in the middle of Europe, and it's not gonna. It's a, it's gonna be a big war. And if uh, if we're not, if you know, we believe, you know, if Putin will take over Ukraine, you know, I don't think that he's gonna stop there. And everyone that we spoke here tonight at this church, well, they thanked us for being here and for getting these messages out to the world. They're hoping that it can make a difference before any more blood is shed. For now, reporting live here in East Hollywood, Mary Beth McDade will send it back to you guys in the studio. Mary Beth, thank you. And hundreds of local Ukrainians and their supporters take to the streets across the Southland denouncing Vladimir Putin and the invasion of their homeland. Many Russian Americans also joined the protest, calling for an end to Putin and the war, standing side by side with their Ukrainian brothers and sisters. KTLA's Rick Chambers is in Studio City tonight with more on local reaction to the invasion. Rick. Yeah, Micah, we've seen anti war protesters gathering throughout the day at the federal building in Westwood earlier, at the Ukrainian Cultural Center where MB is in East Hollywood as well. The gathering, though, tonight at this intersection behind me, much, much larger, but of course, with the same focus. They chanted Niet Vonya, no war. They burned a Russian passport and then a Russian flag. All the while being serenaded by the horns of approving motorists here at this Studio City intersection. This is a shifted moment in humanity that we have to take some actions to stop, spread this chain of violence. Hundreds of flag waving, sign carrying members of both the Ukrainian and the Russian diaspora. Joining together to condemn what Vladimir Putin is doing. It was so heartbreaking that my family was crying. Olya Demcha came here from Ukraine when she was just 12 and still has family there. Russia and Ukraine are friends. We always believed in that, our union. But then that's why it was truly shocking for us that they attacked us. We'll fight Russia, I know it. But we need 
support from the West, not just by the words, but with the actions. At the Rasputin Market in Encino, shoppers voicing their disgust with the invasion. I think our president is going crazy right now. It, it's, it's, it's beyond terrible. Because, like, like I said, nobody knows what's next. Tanya Pol came here from Moscow years ago and can't believe that Putin has ignited a war. It's a huge shock to the whole community, huge shock, because we never in a million years thought that he's going to do what he's doing. <laughs> Loud voices speaking out in the valley, but will they be heard by the decision makers in Eastern Europe? Stop the war! Stop the war! And we expect to hear those voices a lot here in Southern California. More demonstrations are planned for this weekend. In Studio City, I'm Rick Chambers. Guys, back to you in the studio. Rick, thank you. As Russia continues to invade Ukraine, more sanctions are expected from NATO-friendly nations, bottlenecking Russia's trade opportunities to the West. We spoke with House Intelligence Chair Representative Adam Schiff, who explained how personal sanctions against Putin may come into play. Well, we can impose sanctions on Putin directly, and I think we should. We are sanctioning many of the oligarchs around Putin, many of the people that he has made rich, uh, many of those that are using their financial wealth to help support this invasion. Uh, well, Putin is one of the wealthiest of all the oligarchs uh, in Russia or anywhere in the world. Uh, and so we could bring about very personal sanctions on Putin. Now, that's a rare thing. We don't generally sanction heads of state, but it's also not very common to see a nation like Russia invading its uh, neighbor in Europe uh, in, this, uh, in this century uh, or at any point since World War II. So I think those extraordinary circumstances, the heinous nature of this uh, murderous regime uh, and tragic uh, invasion dictate uh, unprecedented remedies like personally going after Putin's wealth. The personal sanctions which may be imposed on Putin and others already held against Russia are creating unexpected market shifts in the global economy. And one of Russia's main exports is oil. And economists say those sanctions could seriously throttle the oil supply to the Western world. And that would in turn cause a ripple effect, increasing prices on consumer goods. KTLA's Chris Wolf in Beverly Grove with what we can expect here at home. Chris. Yeah, Micah and Cher, one consumer expert tells us tonight that the wild gyration in the U.S. stock market today was caused by initial panic and selling, followed by a calm and reserve, leading to the Dow turning right around and going up in a 900-point swing. Still, look at this. Gas prices here in California are some of the highest in the nation, and Americans could continue to feel shockwaves from that conflict overseas. The violence of the Russian invasion may be contained to Ukraine. However, the economic impacts will resound across the globe. Financial experts say the initial sting to the United States could include fuel prices and inflation. When the general price level rises, each unit of currency buys fewer goods and services. In other words, purchasing power drops. Gas prices will probably climb even higher if the hostilities escalate or if U.S. lawmakers pass another round of sanctions, according to experts. The sanctions right now are targeting Russian financial circles. So we're talking about banks, financial companies. Interestingly, they're also targeting some of the oligarchs, the billionaires who are believed to be part of Putin's inner circle. And the thinking there is that if they don't have access to their money overseas, if their assets are being seized by foreign governments, they're not going to be happy. Back here, one gas station in Beverly Grove is charging more than six bucks a gallon for all grades. I just think that we're on the verge of uh, a financial collapse potentially, and um, I think that the, the worse it gets with Russia, that the more prices are going to go up. You know, and uh, it's not looking too good. I've never seen a six dollar price point in my life, so that's definitely super interesting and not the best way. And then there's the ripple effect with rising fuel costs. 
Transportation is a key element of the U.S. infrastructure for moving goods. So all of these products that we buy at Walmart and Target and other places, well, they're arriving by truck and train primarily. They require fuel to get here. As fuel costs go up, none of these companies are going to swallow that. They are going to pass those costs along to customers. Not right away, but I think in weeks ahead. David Lazarus says this is not the time to start panic buying or hoarding but rather a time to minimize debt and practice wise spending habits. Properly balance your household income with your expenses. In challenging times, just remember... All of this is temporary. However, experts say the impact on the Russian people could be far greater. Sanctions against Russia could lead to a recession and depression over there. And that means we're talking about closed banks and food lines, and all kinds of problems in a worst case scenario. Reporting live in Beverly Grove, I'm Chris Wolf, KTLA 5 News. Chris, thank you. And now we want to take a deeper look at Russia's defiance of the West as it presses deeper into Ukraine. Professor Robert English, Director of Central European Studies at USC, joins us live to help put it all into perspective. Thank you for joining us, Robert. As I'm sure you are aware, U.S. intelligence estimates now suggest that. Vladimir Putin's goal here is to take Kyiv, overthrow the Ukrainian government, and install a pro-Russian puppet government, if he were to be successful. That would create a, an enormously complex situation, first and foremost for the people of Ukraine, but for the region as a whole and beyond. You know, it's obvious that Ukraine is massively outgunned by Russia and will not be able to stand up to this assault for long. There's heroic resistance, martyrs are dying, but Russia will prevail at least in taking control. To occupy, to maintain control, guerrilla actions, sabotage, and underground resistance. And what I expect is that Ukraine's military weakness could be matched by a kind of moral strength. What will happen when the first Russian soldiers mutiny or defect? Because that will happen. What will happen when a Russian prisoner records a message of anguish and shame and says, I don't want to do this. Me and my brother Russian soldiers were ordered, but we don't agree. We're killing our Ukrainian brothers. It must stop. When that recorded message resonates in Russia and around the world, we might see that the Ukrainians have more strength than it appears right now. And it will get very complicated. Well, let's not forget that this has been a campaign of disinformation for uh, Putin um, to Russians with what he's been putting on TV, calling uh, what he originally wanted in the Donbass region was saying that these, this were, there was a genocide happening there. Um, originally, people thought that they were only going to take that portion, but it's gone well beyond that. He, we have seen since we last talked 24 hours ago that there have been explosions in some a dozen or, or so cities, some 14 cities within Ukraine. And, you know, what is the end game here? We say, we talk about the decapitation of the, of the government, the current government, and Zelensky being enemy number one. But does it stop there? Does he go further? And then what does the United States do? My guess, although I don't know, and I've been wrong, as we all have in trying to predict Putin's moves, my guess is that after destroying the Ukrainian military and dismantling as much of the state's strength as he can, then Russia will focus on building a Russian zone in eastern Ukraine that they can rule where they can count on a reasonable amount of support from the Russian language population, the ethnic Russians. But even there, there will be acts of sabotage and resistance. Even there, Putin will probably discover that his strength on the military front gradually erodes. And most important of all is what happens at home in Russia, because the unity of shame, of renunciation of all of this on the part of Russians, it's tearing apart social media, protests and demonstrations. It could be harder even for Putin to control that, to suppress those protests, than he has those of Navalny and other opposition politicians for the last 10 years. The weakness of Russia internally, politically, socially, will be exposed 
um, with Putin's crimes, with Putin's brutality. Um, that might be what does it. Not the sanctions, not the economic pain, but the moral pain and the ethical distress. And we have seen just tonight video coming out of Russian cities of hundreds, if not thousands, of people protesting Russia's actions. A remarkable scene on Russian soil. Uh, and on top of all of this, a humanitarian crisis unfolding along the border with Poland, Robert. As you know, hundreds of thousands, some reports suggest millions of people fleeing the violence into Poland, a scenario that's complicated for the neighboring countries as well. Yeah, I think that Putin probably calculated the military moves very well with advanced commandos, saboteurs, the airstrikes, the missiles, the artillery. He probably plotted this out and it's been planned for a long time. But he could not possibly plan for what the reaction of the Ukrainian people will be, the Ukraine's neighbors, his own Russian people. I think that's where he'll be surprised and distressed and where his weakness lies. Not in one day, not in one week. But it'll gather force and undermine the Putin regime from within. All right. Professor Robert English, Director of Central European Studies at USC, thank you so much for your insight tonight. Much, much more coverage on the war in Ukraine still ahead. Including